Hey people, in this video we're going to be making a simple program that will monitor the status of your website uh, so you can tell if it's down or not. So a few days ago my website went down and I didn't even realize it until I went to try to visit it and I couldn't access it so I don't even know how long it could have been down for hours so that gave me the idea that I should probably just make some tool quickly that will monitor my site and then send me a text message if it's down so I can go check it out and fix it and I figured it'd be a good uh, opportunity to just kind of show some newer programmers uh, the thought process behind uh, creating a tool to solve a problem basically my workflow and how I think about kind of creating a solution to a problem. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. Now the first thing we're gonna do is make a game plan for how we're gonna go about creating this thing. Rather than just jumping straight into the code, uh, it's almost always better to make a quick little rough draft of what we're gonna do, the problem, kind of make a, some pseudo code, and then think about what services we're gonna use to solve the problem. So I already have on a little notepad here, basically the core of our program is going to be check if the website is down so how do we do that uh, we're just going to send a simple python request uh, to the home page and see if it's working that'll return a status code and then based on that we're going to have some conditional logic if the site is down if it returns like a 404 error uh, we want to send a text message we also want to do so then how do we run the script uh, you could run it on your local computer with a scheduled task but then the issue you run into uh, is that what if your computer's off? What if a bunch of stuff like that? What if your server, if your computer breaks? Uh, so we're going to host it on a serverless function so that we don't have to worry about any of that. Those background details are basically like Google, a Google Cloud function. Let them handle all the infrastructure and stuff like that, and we'll schedule it with a cron job. And then finally, is how do you send the text message? Uh, there's quite a few APIs to send text messages, Twilio, stuff like that. But what we're going to do is use a uh, service called Zapier where basically they allow you to send a post request to them and then they have thousands of integrations. So in addition to being able to send a text if you wanted, you can instead send an email. Uh, you could send different notification types. You could, you could log the error to like a Google spreadsheet, stuff like that. So this is a really versatile tool and that's what we're gonna be using to send out our notification at the end. All right, so now we kinda got a game plan. Let's basically make a rough little initial script and see if it works. So we're gonna come into our code editor and first thing we're gonna do is import the requests library. That autocomplete comes up. And then we're going to have our URL variable. And then, so you'll be able to just edit in. You can paste in your website URL in there if you want. We're also going to do have a test for failure URL to make sure that logic works as well. And for that, we're going to use a, there's a website called HTTP bin, and uh, it basically allows you to test out requests to these URLs. You can go check out the main website and you can see some more details but basically if we send a request to this URL it'll automatically send back a 404 so basically what we're going to do is we're going to want our response equal to request.get and we're going to put in our URL and for now we're just going to do print uh, response status code so we're just going to do a test here now if we run it down here so you should get a 200 response. And we can see, so basically we're printing out that response. We see right now it's a 200. So that would mean our web, the website's up. It's everything's working fine. Uh, now if we test this fail URL, we should get a 404 response. So we run that again, and we can see the 404. So now since we have a, the ability to test, uh, now we can make our actual conditional logic. So we're going to do if res.status code does not equal uh, 200, then we're going to do print uh, website is down. And this is basically that we're going to 
end up sending a text containing uh, whatever custom message you want. For now, we're just going to print it out. So if we run this again, we should also get a print of uh, no status code. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Simple mistake. And I don't know why my error checking, my editor. Okay, so there we go. Website is down. So now we know we're on the right path. But I'm also thinking uh, it's possible sometimes that you might get a false alarm. So how do we kind of limit the false alarms? We're going to import time. And we're basically going to add a double check. So we'll do time.sleep. We'll have it sleep for 30 seconds. And then we'll have it make another request. And then uh, basically we'll check again if after another 30 seconds if the website's still down, then we'll basically re we'll actually send the message. So if res dot status code is not equal to 100, then we're just gonna do send text. So this is where we're gonna send a. Uh, We'll send a post request to our Zapier URL here. So we're gonna do requests dot post, and then we'll do our. We'll get a variable up here. We'll do our webhook URL, and that's what we're gonna do a post request to. So now, if we go, you can see you'll have to make a Zapier account, and I'll have a link to that. But basically, in your dashboard. Uh, you can make a zap and I already have one pre-made so we'll look at this as an example but basically we can see you're gonna want your trigger is gonna be a catch hook so it's a web hook by Zapier and then if you go in here it'll give you a URL and basically you can then just send a request to it and that's the URL you'll use in your code and then you can choose an action so right now I have send SMS but you have tons of options if we go back to our dashboard and look at explore you can see uh, basically they have thousands of integrations so you could send it instead of sending a text you could put it to a google sheet uh, you could send an email all sorts of stuff so i'll leave that up to you but what we want to do is grab our webhook url so mine is over here paste this in here And then we're gonna send. Uh, also, want to add JSON for whatever reason. You have to basically. We're not gonna use this text, but uh, for whatever reason, it won't accept it unless there's something supposed to do. Dummy text, and we'll put stuff here. We're not even gonna take advantage of this at all, but for whatever reason, it needs that. Otherwise, it won't work properly. So now, what we're gonna do? is basically just test this out. If all goes well, my phone will get a text message in a few seconds. So you probably didn't hear it, but my phone just vibrated and it had the text message con contained. And uh, what I didn't also specify is if we go into our zaps, you can also customize the message. That's where you're gonna customize if you're using the text message, uh, you're gonna do it in that response. So the text, whatever you customize in here uh, for this template is what you'll receive. We don't need to do that in our code. But now, what basically what we have left to do is clean up a few things here uh, in our code, then we'll deploy it to our Google Cloud function, and then we'll create the cron job to schedule it and run it every, for me, I'm gonna set to so it run every five minutes, but you'll be able to customize however often you want to run, uh, you can do that. But first, uh, we're gonna wanna pull this down because we don't want it, we want it to print that below our double check. We don't wanna print it down unless we've already confirmed. We're also gonna change this to just our normal URL and then we're gonna add an else. It's so basically else if it's working, we're gonna print website is working. And then you'll be able to go, uh, all your print statements will be logged to our Google Cloud function and then you can sort through the logs. So if there's something going wrong with your site, you can get some more information. Uh, we'll also print the status code for these. 
just so you have some additional context if you need to check something out. So we'll print this and then you can sort through. I'll show you in the Google Cloud function monitoring area, you'd be able to basically sort by text and you can look for various uh, errors basically. Or you'll be able to sort by the name itself of the function error. So response dot status code. All right. So I'll just double check, make sure I don't have any typos. And one thing I noticed now is that we didn't wrap the code in a function. So that's something that uh, the Google Cloud function requires. So we're gonna call it site status. Uh, and then we also have to pass a request since Google Cloud functions work uh, using Flask, which is a Python web framework. We have to pass this request object even though we're not gonna use it. And then we have to indent all this once. So it's inside this function. And the last thing we're gonna need to do before we deploy our code is come into our requirements and make sure that we specify requests so that it'll automatically uh, basically install this so that we can use it inside our code. So now that we have that done, we can go down here and deploy our cloud function. So to do that, we're gonna use the command line uh, tool, gcloud, but uh, if you're not comfortable with that or if you're having trouble getting it installed and working from the command line, we can also do it through the user interface, which I'll also show you. So uh, you also have the option, you can just copy and paste the code and we can, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but for now, uh, we're gonna try to use the command line. So basically, uh, well, you're, this is going to be the name of your function, so it'll show up in the user interface as site status. We want the runtime to be Python 3.7, and then we want the trigger to be HTTP, and then the entry point will be, uh, let's see how we do this, will be site status again. So basically the entry point specifies uh, the name of this function. So whatever you named it in here, you'd put your function like that. So now if we click enter, uh, we should, it'll take a few minutes, but that'll upload our code and then we can go check it out later. All right, so now we can see that our deployment worked properly. It gives us some information on the function we just created. Uh, so now we're going to check it out in the user interface. So if we come in here, we can see we have our site status function. And basically what you want to do in here is look at the source. If you didn't do that deploy, if you come into the source here after creating it, this will be empty. And then you can just copy and paste that code in. And you want to make sure to make your requirements.txt and put that in as well. But what we want from here is our trigger. This is basically the URL that... Uh, if we visit this URL, it'll activate this function. And what we're going to do is now create a scheduler. So go into Tools, Cloud Scheduler, and this is going to allow us to create a uh, automated cron job that will then, every at a time period we specify, it'll check your website to make sure it's up or down, basically. So we're just going to call it Site Status Trigger. And then what we want down here is you want an asterisk with a divided by one and then another four behind that. And what this is going to do is check for testing. It's going to check every minute so we can make sure everything's working right. We don't have to wait five minutes in between tests. And then once we make sure, once we've verified our code is working properly, uh, we'll come back and we'll change this to a five so that it runs every five minutes to check if our site's down. Or if you want to do every 10, uh, you can do it however you want, uh, how, however how frequently you want to test your site, that's what you can do. So we're going to do HTTP, we're going to do a GET request, and then once again, uh, if you go to your trigger for your function, you want to get that URL, and you're going to paste that in there. So now we're going to create that, and it's enabled. So now, if this all works properly, and you have your function activated, uh, in a few minutes we should see that there this will start being uh, 
this function will start being triggered. And if your site's down, it'll send you a text. And if not, uh, we can check out our logs and see what's going on there as well. Okay, so I let this thing run for a little bit. We can see now that every minute, if you look up here, our code is getting triggered by that by that scheduled cron job. And if we go into our logs, we can now see uh, we get our initial of where basically uh, we created the function, but then down here we can see function execution started, 200 website is working. So because I the way I have it set up is that uh, if it's working, it just prints it to it prints it to the uh, our logs. It doesn't send a text or anything because we don't want to get a text message every minute telling us what we already know. Uh, basically, see if we load it again, we can see recently it's checked again. So uh, now what we're going to want to do is just go back. Uh, we're going to change our code to make sure that our fail case is working. So we're going to go to source and we're going to edit because we just want to make sure that our text messages are working again. Uh, so we're going to change this to the fail URL and I'm making sure, oh, we have to also make it here too, fail URL. So we're going to make this change quick and click deploy. And then we're going to go back to our logs and you can also keep your phone handy. And if everything works correctly, uh, you'll get a text message telling you that your site's down and you'll also it'll show up in the logs. So this will take a few minutes to deploy. Uh, so I'm going to wait for that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I started, everything worked uh, how we expected it to, so I already rolled back my code, so I stopped getting text messages every minute, and we can verify that if we go into our logs again, uh, we can see that once we changed it, uh, we can see up here we get the updated function, and then after that, up, that update takes place, we can start seeing that our 404 uh, comes in and our website is down, and we can see that compared to before, before it took tw uh, basically 245 milliseconds. Down here it takes 30 seconds, 30,000 milliseconds, 30 seconds. And that's because we put in that double check where it delays for 30 seconds. So we can see it. pretty much everything's working how we expected. Uh, the last thing we're going to want to do now is just come in here and edit this. If we can, I don't even... Ah, here we go. Edit. We want to change this to from a one minute interval to every five minutes and then we're just going to update that so that's basically everything i want to show in this video i basically i really just wanted to kind of show how my thought process goes as i work through a problem stuff like that so i hope this helped out some of the newer programmers uh if you like content like this be sure to hit subscribe and like the video uh but other than that that's it for now